So the Rams are Super Bowl champions. So what exactly is the biggest challenge to running it back? You are Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day, your team every single day. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for checking out the program. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to Locked on Rams. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Of course, you can subscribe to our Locked on YouTube channel as well. I host the pregame show, the postgame show on the Rams flagship station ESPN 710 right here in Los Angeles. And today we're going to do something uh, a little bit different. We're going to talk with my co-host on the Rams pre and post game show, Kirk Morrison, and break down a whole bunch of different things, including the biggest challenges to running it back. So make sure that you listen to Kirk and I today on Locked on Rams. Okay, so as promised, my uh, co-host on the Rams pregame show, <laughs> halftime show, and postgame show, we've done all of these shows since the Rams came back to Los Angeles way back in 2016, the longtime NFL linebacker Kirk Morrison. Kirk, how you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. How you feeling, Travis? Are you still basking in the uh, championship aura uh, of the uh, of the Rams? Absolutely. The the getting to say world champion Los Angeles Rams has not yeah. worn off anytime soon. It it really is. You know, kind of. Let's start right there, Kirk. The idea of going all in. The idea of saying f them picks. You know, f the combine. We're just going to kind of go and <laughs> right. do this our own way. Do you think other teams are going to try to? duplicate the Rams philosophy and, and go about this differently than the other 31 teams have? Well, I, I think that they should. I mean, I think the Rams have definitely put the entire league on notice. Um, no longer are teams talking about, or should they be talking about, oh, we have a plan in place. We want to say we're two years away or three years away. I mean, we're seeing by this coaching cycle where we had nine new head coaches get appointed this season to where, Hey, we watched the, Cincinnati Bengals go to a Super Bowl and they did it in the third year under Zach Taylor. But I think when you look at the Rams in particular, what Les Snead has done, what Sean McVay has done, the way that they've retooled the roster, we've had a chance to see it from the beginning, from the inception of when they moved back to Los Angeles. And to think how competitive this team has been each and every single year, If I, I'd, I'd be foolish if I was a general manager or an executive to say, hey, what are they doing? I need to figure out what are they doing because we need to do that. So, you know, maybe that's one of the reasons why Brad Holmes, who's one of the former head of pro player personnel for the Rams is now Mm -hmm. in Detroit. And maybe he can bring some of what the Rams did over to Detroit. And look, they had an okay first season in Detroit. I would, you know, definitely not to our standards. It was okay, but obviously they have a plan in place and uh, they are trying to steal what the Rams have been doing because they've been so successful, Travis. So what do you think, you know, if the Rams continue want to continue the success, and obviously they got the most important pieces in place. You have the head coach, right. you have the quarterback, you have some playmakers on offense, and of course you have the greatest defensive player in the entire league in Aaron Donald. These are the, the most important things that you already have covered, but the biggest right. challenge to running it back next year is what, Kirk? I mean, just obviously is when guys win Super Bowls is what we see throughout sports. It's guys that say, I won my Super Bowl, now I'm trying to get paid. You know what I mean? It's all in for the greater good, but, you know, now I got to start looking out for self. And that never really was the case. It always seemed like the Rams, the way we've seen, is one of the most selfless bunches that we've ever seen. That guys who played for each other, they coached for each other. They did everything with the team mindset that Sean McVay has set that culture up. But now, hey, everybody's won a Super Bowl. Now guys are starting to, hey, I want to get paid. So, you know, when the head coach gets an extension, when Les Snee gets an extension, hey, Aaron Donald still, to me, for the best, you mentioned the best defensive player in the league, uh, he grossly underpaid, right? <laughs> you right. Think that, <laughs> whatever whatever <laughs> it is, it's not enough, right? Yeah, same thing. I mean, even Jalen Ramsey, he's same thing. I mean, they the Rams stars have played above the standard of what we expected of them. They all had an impact on them winning a Super Bowl, but then it's also to the guys underneath, you know, the guys who were your role players, your backups, guys who play, you know, spots in which you look up and say, wow, this guy, he had four or five tackles, you know, and you're like, whoa, how'd this happen? 
and you're looking at the backup tight ends now. You're looking at the offensive linemen who got a chance to play a lot this year. So what stops the Rams, honestly, is guys going out there and really taking care of themselves. It's, it's nothing against the, the Rams, but it's against now as a player mentality of, hey, I got my championship. I, I played for that. But now I got to go out and support my family, get what I feel like I've earned and shows the respect around the league of how much you make. OK, so there you go. So now the biggest question is who comes back to run it back? That's coming up next. But first, let's talk about our pals at Bet Online. Football season, sadly, is over just for this season. It'll be back before you know it. But basketball is right here right now, right? Both pro and college hoops. You got the playoffs right around the corner. Of course, you got the big tournament coming up for all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Bet Online remains the best spot for all your sports scores podcasts and news this season and it's not just basketball <clears throat> excuse me betonline.net is your source for hockey boxing ufc right down to the olympics and everything else that you might want so head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online where the game starts Again, thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Make sure you're following Locked on NFL as well. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so who's going to run it back for the Rams? It's coming up next, me and Kirk Morrison. Kirk Morrison joining us here on Locked on Rams, your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. So with that in mind, Kirk, about guys, obviously I've got the ring on my finger, right? I've got my championship and now it's about making sure that I set myself up financially and my team, or I should say my family up financially. Right. What, what, what happens with OBJ? What happens with Vaughn Miller? Vaughn Miller's made a lot of money. OBJ Correct. has made a decent amount of money. They're in a place that seems like a very good fit. Which of those two guys do you think is most likely to come back? Could they both come back? Could they both leave? I think they both can come back. Um, it just depends on what are they looking for. Are they looking for long-term contracts or short-term contracts? I think for right now, when you look at Von Miller, I think he's on a year-to-year -year basis in the NFL, meaning that he can continue to play. But if someone offers him a multi-year deal for a lot of money, I think he's got to jump all over that. Right. But if you're looking for, hey, I think I can go year to year in this league and make a lot of money, but be able to have the freedom to, to go somewhere if needed. Um, that's sort of what they put themselves in. I think for both of them, I definitely will return to Los Angeles just because they're both playing a role of just being. And I don't want to make that downplay who they are as players, but they're not coming in as the number one guy. OK, like Von Miller used to resign him. He's still behind Aaron Donald, but he yep. can still go out and be a pro bowler, all pro type player. But he doesn't have to come in and be Superman. Right. He comes in and gets 10 or 12 sacks, but he gets, you know, those sacks like we saw this year in the playoffs, the final weeks of the season. You know, those are the sacks that are most important. I can see him being in that role as far as Odell Beckham. I think there's a lot to in play here. And I think, you know, more you kind of peel the onion a little bit, you think of here's a guy in the league now on his second ACL injury on the same knee. Mm -hmm. um, he just had a baby, you know, lives in Los Angeles. He's he's always lived here in the offseason as well. And then now he's going to have to go out and, and, and rehab this knee. Uh, I, I would say the long term contracts are probably not going to be there for him. This seems to be a one year deal maybe with some incentives or maybe have to almost rehab a year as well. I think the Rams are the best situation for him and because of just where, how everything has happened and where he's at right now. Okay. So those are the guys that may be coming back, but what about some guys that may walk out the door that's coming up in just a second, but first, Rock Auto, right? You've seen the commercials on TV. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend all of your money on things that you can get for 30%, 50% less, the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? For example, Honda Odyssey, a fuel pump, 353 from a chain store, just 216 from Rock Auto. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And here's how you do it. You write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you there. Again, locked on in the how did you hear about us box. And they will take great care of you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. 
rockauto.com. Okay, so is Andrew Whitworth going to return to the Rams? That's the question, right? It seemed like it was a good time to walk out the door. Let's continue our conversation with Kirk Morrison. Very quickly, um, Andrew Whitworth, is there any chance he comes back to the team? As, as I've been looking at it, it feels like all indications are that he's probably had enough. He's been in the league nearly 20 years. He just won a Super Bowl. Walter Payton, man of the year, one of the most well-respected guys in the entire organization. It feels like it might be time for him to go do something else, but he hasn't said anything yet. I mean, it feels like he should walk away. I think we people think that it's the right thing for him to do. But when you look at the way he played last year, the guy still played at a high level. And it's one thing that when you love what you do, and obviously he loves what he does, and he's very much into his um, thinking of, you know what, I can do this, I can do that, I can, you know, I'm at home with, with my family, we love California. Hey, why not give it one more year? You know, would you take Andrew Whitworth, even half of Andrew Whitworth? I, I think I would. Of course, just having him in the building, Kirk, just, <laughs> just having him <laughs> with your other players, I think he's worth, you know, I don't know, he, he makes a lot of money this year, but even if you cut right. him to whatever you're giving him, even if he doesn't play at a high level, he's still incredibly right. valuable just on the character that he brings, the professionalism, the work ethic. He's just, you're not going to find another guy like that. Absolutely. And I think for he's one of those guys that you got to throw him out of the league before he walks away. So, you know, if he retires, hey, great career. If he comes back, I wouldn't be surprised. Would anybody say, no, no, why are you coming back? Go retire. Like, no, like, if he wants to come back, he comes back. And I mean, he's not a top 15, top 10 tackle, but he's a guy that doesn't allow guys to get to Matthew Stafford. That's all I know is that when no. I look at him playing, I don't say, wow, that was on Whitworth. Like, they, he has not been a turnstile. The guy still plays at a high level, and that's all you're asking for. I think he couldn't be in a better position. Sean McVay has really put that extra five, six years on Whitworth's career. He came in, and I was like, oh, here's got a little tackle on, on the downturn. But yet they drafted a tackle, and now that tackle and no one was up for free agency. Yeah, he's up for free agency because he couldn't <laughs> right. get on the field. We see this all the time, Travis, and quarterbacks, right? They have the incumbent quarterback. They draft a kid, and everybody's saying, well, we know that kid's got to play at some point. But you're like, but the starter is playing better than the <laughs> other guy. So it's hilarious what we're seeing with him right now. And, and I honestly believe that, you know, in, in my whole heart, do I think he retires? I don't think so. I think he had a ton of fun. He won a Super Bowl, and to quote Sean McVay, Run, Run it, it back. back. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> he was the only one that didn't sign up on the spot. Everybody else was doing it. Speaking of Sean McVay, um, you and I have gotten to spend a little time with him doing Rams pre and post game. We've interviewed him a handful of times about it, you know, training camp at Irvine at the start of the season. Right. And he's a remarkably intense guy and an incredibly gifted head coach. And when the idea of him maybe going to television was first floated right before the Super Bowl. I kind of, yeah, all right, whatever. That There'll be plenty of time to go do that. He's still right. 36 years old. He's you know going to go and coach in his second Super Bowl. And I didn't think it was a real thing, maybe just a bit of a negotiating strategy. And then I heard some of the numbers, Kirk. <laughs> and, and when you right. hear 100 million for five years thrown around the way that it was with Amazon reportedly, that was the only time I really thought, hey, maybe this might be something he could go do because – I don't know if a hundred million comes around all that often. Now he's right. since decided I'm going to stay with the Rams. I'm going to continue to coach that team. But was there ever a moment where you thought that may, maybe he might go do something like this just because the numbers were getting so crazy? No, you know me, I'm always thinking out of the box. And I, I thought about just who, when I hear the McVay name, um, his, his, his name, we, we forget that his grandfather was one of the architects of the San Francisco 49ers football team. His dad's name is up over there at Levi Stadium. I mean, his grandfather's name is at Levi Stadium. He's a football lifer. He loves being in it. This is who he is. He loves coaching. He loves mentoring. He, he loves the challenge. And I think as we, you know, years may go by, he may have get burnt out a little bit. He can do 10 years and say, I'll take some time off. And then come back and he'll still be at the ripe age of what, 45, 46 <laughs> years old. You know what I mean? Like, it's like if there's Crazy. no rush and I know people are like, hey, how could you give up on that money? But it's one thing when you have that opportunity to do something that you love. He loves coaching. He loves working with Matthew Stafford. He loves working with his guys. I think, and he loves living in Los Angeles too. And and having, you know, dude just won a Super Bowl. I, I think about that. He won a Super Bowl, won a championship in L.A. 
And he's like, all right, I'm out. I'm done. Like, no, let, I want to, <laughs> I want to take advantage of this a little bit. He starts to win a couple more and we start putting him possibly, and maybe I'm going a little bit ahead of myself, but you think about Phil Jackson, you think about Tommy Lasorda, you think about some of the great coaches that yep. we've had in Los Angeles. Why can't Sean McVay's name be right there amongst some of the great coaches of Los Angeles sports history? Well, that's Kirk. Kirk that you, you're thinking the same way I was because when he decided to say, "Okay, officially, I'm coming back," the first thing that jumped into my mind is a a big extension's coming, so the money will be close enough that he doesn't have to worry about setting himself up forever. They're going to take care of him financially. But the other part was he must think they're going to be pretty good again. Because if, yeah. there, if there was ever a time to go do it, it would have been right now. Because to your point, go do TV for five years or whatever, put $100 million in the bank, and then go take the pick of whatever job it is that's open at the time because he'll get whatever he wants. He'll be right. that hot of a commodity. But he must think that this team is set up not just to have done what they did last year, but to at least be in the mix to compete for more Super Bowls over the next handful of years, or else I think that would have been a decent time to walk away from it. No, it, it would have been. But I think to your point – um, it's also the culture that you're that you've set. The, the culture that he set is a winning culture. He loves walking in that building, loves playing at SoFi Stadium. I mean, come on, man. It's a, like who, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so many things that I think that he loves about the job that he's created. And I think for him to walk away to television, I think that's always going to be there for him. That opportunity at some point, uh, he can do that. But I think that you get into this business to get to this point. And to win one and say, I'm walking away. No, I think he wants to get more and more. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised, like you mentioned, he's got the team that's coming back um, and the challenges, right? The challenges of running it back. We know how difficult it is to win one, let alone try to win back to back. It's a challenge that I know that he's biting at him right now that I want to go out and try to do some things that, you know, haven't been done in the NFL in a long time. We haven't seen back-to-back -back winner. We've seen one in the last 20 years. The Patriots did it once, Patriots. and we know, we know how good they were, but they did it one time in that 20-year window. To do it for today's episode of Locked on Rams. Make sure you subscribe to Locked on Rams, both on wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on our Locked on Rams YouTube channel. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked on NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They're going to bring you the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams.